are joined live now by retired assistant Detroit Police Chief Steve Dolan. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Okay. No in, in our, our last hour, you talked about this fallen officer's father who worked for you. Can you tell us more about this family? Nick alluded to what he can tell just from looking at his Facebook page. I haven't looked at the Facebook page. Um, do know that you're proud of your uh, family members that come on the job. Very proud of his son. I'm sure his son was very proud of him. He had a distinguished career with the police department, and I'm sure his son wanted to live up to uh, those expectations and did, and actually gave the ultimate sacrifice for complete strangers. And people may not realize that, but that's what, that's what he did. He went in, total stranger, responded to a run on shots fired, and he made the decision to get out, he and his partner, and possibly engage this individual. It's heartbreaking for the family, the immediate family, for the father, uh, it's a proud moment when your um, family member graduates from the academy. It's a devastating moment uh, when you lose them. It's devastating. And we are talking about what officers have to face every single day. And what right now seems like unprecedented times where gun violence and the amount of people that have guns and that are using them are more than ever. Talk us through as an officer what they're facing in what seems like unprecedented times. You know, it's been going on for, for years. He, he was on the job for five years. I came out in the 80s. Um, back in the 80s, they actually had uh, funding for mental health. Now too many people um, that have mental issues somehow get guns, get weapons. And back when I came on, they carried 38 revolvers. Now these individuals, especially the ones that are doing uh, mass shootings, are using semi-automatic rifles, and SKS, AK-47, Tech-9, and... Uh, you got to wonder, pardon me, what the hell's going on with society? Not all these people should have guns. We need more money for mental health. The officers are told to go in and to do the best they can to defuse the situation. And something like this, it didn't work out. It probably could have been um, avoided if we had proper mental health, but um, who knows for sure. It's uh, definitely a trying time throughout the country, throughout the world. And when you look at all these people that gain access to weapons, um, and then killing people indiscriminately. What is the process? I know you're probably still in contact with active officers right now in terms of how you're combating these potential situations. I actually haven't, I've reached out to the chief. That, that's about it. Because um, the officer's father who worked, they're a very close knit group at Narcotics. That's where he worked. And they're all mourning together, trying to get together trying to collect their thoughts, trying to figure out what we're going to do in the next week. Um, obviously, a uh, huge funeral. Uh, there's going to be officers, including the officer who uh, fired the fatal shot at the suspect. You're going to need counseling. Chief White, that's one of his um, strong points. He has a degree in psychology. He's going to be trying to get the department together, bring them together, keep them strong, and tell them we still got to go on tomorrow and tonight and keep on doing what we do and remain safe and protect each other. It's, it's a very trying time and it will be the next week and then beyond for the families. And you mentioned it, the families, not just this department is a family, but the loved ones that you leave every single day when you go out and do your job. Can you give us some perspective on how everyone may be feeling right now? You know, um, I was saying this last night, it's because you put on a uniform, it doesn't make you a robot. We're human beings as well. Our goal, uh, and the goal of everyone, I think, is to get home at night after your shift or wherever you work. Uh, there have been times recently where officers have made traffic stops and things have gone south real quick. Both the officer and maybe the individual they are stopping uh, were seriously injured or uh, died. You have to understand that when we make a traffic stop, we're as much on edge as you are. Mm -hmm. You're afraid that we might be doing something to harm you, and we're afraid you might be doing something to harm us. I think we need patience right now from both the police and from the citizens, and that we come together and try to trust each other. We, today's society, there's just, people just don't care. Uh, there's no uh, respect for life. Yeah, it's something that we are all facing and dealing with. It creates a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot 
of time that we all need to wrap around around each other, including the Detroit Police Department. So we are certainly keeping people like you, a uh, retired officer, but always a part of that department and everyone in that department uh, in our hearts and prayers as well. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us some perspectives this morning.